Today we're going to be talking about RV stabilization, whether you should build or whether you should buy. So it's no surprise to, to know that towable RVs kind of suffer from wiggling and wobbling when they're sitting still. They're, they're heavy when you're pulling them and then when you're sitting still they can't be heavy enough because when somebody gets up in the back of the RV, people in the front of the RV feel every wobble and move. So there's lots of things out there you can do to stabilize your RV. And so today I want to test to see whether you should build some stabilizers or whether you should buy some stabilizers. I've got these Valterra aluminum ones that you can purchase ready to go. And I've got some two by four versions that you can make yourself. We're going to put them on the RV. We're going to try and jump and shake around and see which one provides better stabilization and what the differences are between the two of them. All right, so what we're going to do is three different tests. We're going to do a control group where we just have the wheels chalked and the tongue jack down. We're going to shake it about and see what that looks like. I've got a spirit level here and I've also got a gyroscope on my phone where we're going to be able to see the different, uh, how much shaking goes on. Then we're going to put in the Valterra and we're going to test the same jumping around moving with the Valterra and then we're going to take the Valterra off and we're going to put in the 2x4 and then we'll compare all three and see you know how much did they stabilize because I assume they stabilize portions just based off of anecdotal experience of using them and uh, if one is better than the other. All right, here we go. Wheels chalked, front jack down. We'll go side to side here. And now forwards and backwards. Back side to side. So that spirit level is getting almost halfway outside of the lines on there. Now, if you like watching comparisons of buy it or build it DIY projects for your RV, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Stick around to the end because I've got another idea for RV stabilization that you're not going to want to miss and I need your opinion. So to put out the Valterra, you take it out of the bag and you adjust the aluminum tubes with the push pins to the desired height. You're looking to get about a 45 to 60 degree angle on those legs. Then you take the ratchet strap and you take one hook, clip it to the foot, on the far side, then take the other hook, clip it to the foot on the near side, make sure that the top bars are resting against the frame of the trailer and start ratcheting down until it's tight. In Valterra's instructions, they are providing a stabilization kit to provide both forward and backward stabilization as well as side to side. So they actually recommend putting it on the back bumper and then right underneath the entryway door. However, I want to make sure that we are comparing apples to apples here and so I'm using one on the front for side to side movement and one on the back for side to side movement because the two by four version, you're not gonna be able to put underneath stairs like that. It's just, it's not how it would be designed to work. You need a ratchet strap that would be longer than your rig and no one's gonna have that. So we're gonna do lateral side to side movements. And so now we're gonna jump around with the gyroscope and the spirit level and see how the Valterra does side to side movement. So that bubble level definitely is going in and out, but not as drastic or as far as without the stabilizers. So let's go take this Valterra off, put it in the 2x4 DIY version and see what those look like. And if you want to connect and interact with other RVers talking about gear, DIY projects, best practices, jump on over to the RV Gear and Far group. I'll make sure to put a link in the video description. So for the DIY stabilizers, you're going to need some 2x4s, you're going to need some eye bolts and washers, nuts, and a few ratchet straps. Building the DIY version is all going to depend on your specific trailer. You're going to have to measure from the ground to the top of the frame rail. And then you're going to come out about 45 to 60 degrees from that. Ideally, go ahead and measure from a level surface. Although as different sites vary and you're not level, you're not always gonna get it exactly at a 45 degree because with the DIY version, you can't adjust the leg length. Once you cut the wood, that's whatever length it's going to be. But it'll give you a good idea and a good range of angles with a certain length. So for my trailer, I chose to do about three and a half feet. But again, you're going for 45 to 60 degrees. Just go ahead and measure, get your trailer level, go from the top of the frame, and measure out to the ground to determine how long of two by fours you're gonna need. Now I chose to cut mine at 45 degree angles, although it really doesn't matter because every site's gonna be different. And as soon as the angle changes a little bit, 
uh, you're gonna have different points meeting the frame and meeting the ground. So you could just leave them straight cuts and then go off like that. But about a foot off the ground, you're gonna wanna drill holes and put the eye bolts through with big fender washers so that you can get the weight spread out and it's not pulling just on the nut of the eye bolt. Because what you're gonna do is get a, a ratchet strap that's long enough to span the width of your trailer. You're gonna take those two by fours and you're gonna wedge them up into the bottom of your frames on both sides of your trailer. Then between, you're gonna run your ratchet strap and ratchet it down just like the Valterra. Basically a DIY version of the same product. Let's go get those switched out with the Valterras and then we're gonna test and see if they stabilize any better than the ones you can buy. All right, so now we have the DIY two x four version out there. Let's go ahead and jump around and see what kind of movement on the spirit level we get with that. Wow, there is significant improvement with the DIY version. So what did I observe? Should you build it or should you buy it? I think, I think you should build it um, with some caveats in there. I think even not even looking at the gyroscope, but just watching the bubble level on the spirit level, uh, the DIY version stopping lateral movement uh, side to side just did phenomenally better than the Valterra, um, which kind of makes sense. It's a wider footprint. It goes outside the frame versus inside the frame. That is also negative because then the two by four sticks out past the side of the RV. It also creates a tripping hazard at four points around the RV that were not already there. So it's a trade-off for sure. Another trade-off is that the DIY version is heavier. The Valterra one is totally aluminum, fits in a nice to-go bag. Uh, it's a nice compact system. It's easily storable and stash away. Uh, whereas the, the two by four version is you've got, you know, I've got four, three and a half foot two by fours that are heavier than the aluminum ones. Um, you know, I can trim this bolt down, but there's also things protruding uh, to get caught and tear, tear floors inside of pass-throughs and uh, catch my hand on the way out or catch a, a tub on the way in. So that's another thing to consider. But uh, the cost is, you know, Valterra is four to five times more expensive than the DIY version. And the DIY version performed better. So if you can deal with the extra weight and a little bit of bulkiness, and then the tripping hazards, I think the DIY version is actually the way to go. The Valterra definitely improved the stability of the trailer versus having nothing. However, the DIY 2x4 version, uh, I think definitely performed the best out of the two. Now I wanna look into seeing, I've got electronic stabilizer feet on my RV, just the, the arms that go up and down electronically motor controlled. A lot of trailers have the scissor jack style, one on each corner. And I'd be really interested to see if the scissor jacks provide better stabilization than the motorized ones. Obviously the motorized ones are more convenient. You just press a button and they go down. But I'd be curious to know, and let me know in the comments below if you'd be curious to know as well, if scissor jacks provide more stabilization at the cost of inconvenience, you know, manually having to do all four corners versus pressing a button to lower electronic ones. So if you gained some value from this video, go ahead and leave me some comments down below, show some appreciation. Until next time, I'm Joshua. Take care and pay it forward.